That was Purgatory. Kill the Infected. Unreleased mix. Unreleased. I don't want to get sued. I'm already getting sued, but I don't want to get sued now. Sued, sued by yourself. Yeah, I'm going to sue myself. Yeah, my aunt is called Sue as well, so she might even <laughs> sue me. If she comes over and goes, you're being sued, I'm going to be like, is this some sort of like suception pun shit? Or are you actually suing me and you're a lawyer and I don't know about that? Um, this is my track that I got mixed down at Strong Room Studios recently by David Jones. Absolutely. Like, I, I haven't said this to him, but I want to say to him, you do know you sound very similar to a, a David guy Jones. in... Uh, yeah, David Jones, yeah. By a Scabian. He's probably like... I've heard that a lot, just like people have said to you, do you know Kat Slater? I don't, because she's made up. But I'll tell you what, her initials, my initials are Tom Slater. I she became was a, she's a, total, a slag. total slag. Yeah, exactly. So I am actually the original total slag. And that's fine. It's not really. But um, yeah, so that was, I got that mixed down. That's strong. This is, this is going to be, I'm not going to lie, me and Sam are jamming Saturday night, doing some podcasts. Do you want to do one on a whim? I do. Strong Room Special, so the other week, um, 1st of August, first day of a good month, and uh, basically got my track mixed down at Strong Room Studios. The reason why, when I was at uni, I know a guy called Bertie, uh, he used to live at... I uh, love that name. Bertie, great. Yeah. He, Bert, uh, he Kate, That's um, Kate Bush's son's name, just so you know. Is Bertie Kate Bush's son? Kate Bush. Uh, See, she, I met his mum and I don't sung, think it's Kate Bush, but... She sung about her son called Bertie. What an unfortunate surname. No. So she's got so much shit oh, for Bush, that. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so basically... But Wuthering Heights, uh, what a song. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. Bush now. 70s Bush. Um, yeah, so basically... Mommy, a coffee, a cola, <laughs> so yeah. cold. When, when, when you... When you hear it, other than being heard, you sound like the greased up deaf guy from Family Guy. Yeah. You're never gonna catch me! <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. But um, yeah, so basically, I used to know a guy called Bertie, a uh, bit of a biography. I went to uni in Southend, which was nothing to brag about. This was the one I mentioned before when the two doors that you closed for sound isolation, isolation none of them closed. So Shout that's out a bad to year. first podcast. Yeah, yeah. But For those who listened, thank exactly. you. Yeah. But you yeah, know. so basically Bertie he used to live at uh, his house number was thirty, so I used to say Dirty Bertie who lives at number thirty. Bars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your your man, boy Dirty Bertie, your man, he lives at number thirty. Joel, he's his mum's not Kate I Bush. thought you were about to go into some next mad stuff, but you no, I can't. I, I've always got like two sentences and that's it maximum. Yeah. And they're good, and you're like, it's such a letdown. That's why like, M- you could go MCing is such an art. It is um, an art, yeah. You can't beat it. You can't. You've got an MC you want to bring on. Let's do it soon. soon. Who? The guy used to MC for you. Oh, yeah, well, I'll see if he's around. We'll do that. He's a good guy. Isaac, absolute nah. Uh Yeah, so basically, a uh, bit of backstory about why I went to Strong Rooms. Um, my mate Bertie, I used to go uni with him, and he, he basically... He took charge of his band and recorded all these demos. And I used to uh, walk into his room and he'd, he'd be playing on, uh, record them on Audacity. He'd do the backing, the leads, the vocals, the drums on Reason, and just basically make his demos in his room. And I'd just be sitting there watching him do it. And it'd just be really like, he, he knew what he needed to do to get to the next position. He understood that it isn't about gigs, gigs are dying. Uh, it's all about money. Money talks these days, and unfortunately, it does. So he basically said to me, you need to make sure everything you do is perfect to you at that time. It's not going to be perfect because you're obviously going to get older and learn more. But at that time, whatever's perfect for you at that time, do it and your path will take you in the right way. And he basically got, I can't remember the name of the studio, I think it was like Outhouse, no, not Outhouse, that's the way to shit. Um, Roundhouse Studios. Um, I always get mixed up with that. Like People go, I'm going to go to Outhouse Studios. That sounds, that, that sounds unhygienic. Ra- I was talking about our house again. Roundhouse Studios. Um, he went there. I think that's where like Enet Shikari. He said the Enet Shikari funeral for a friend. The point is they were big bands at the time, and he basically got his stuff recorded there. He basically did the demos for each of his members. You know, drums on reason. Sent it to the drummer. Learn these drums. Guitarist, rhythm, bass, blah blah blah. And then they said we're all going to chip in two hundred and fifty quid or whatever, and then we're going to re- uh, book it for two, one or two days, which is like a grand, grand and a bit. And they basically got their EP done, and it got them a good opportunity because. Wait, so who paid for those? The band. So the band. they did like a grand. So I think it was like a grand and a bit. So two fifty each between four of them. So it's not that much at all, but it's a, it's it's basically you know it's not what you know it's who you know. It's basically yeah. they basically bought their way into the it's not but what you know. But that's that's the know. way to do it. It now. is the way, unless, unfortunately. Unless you're it's not really a talent. 
you have to buy your way in yeah. and that's just the way it is so that's kind of what I did with Strong Rooms and basically yeah. I'm very influenced by old school 90s dance so that would be the Prodigy Chemical Brothers Aphex Twin Moby and uh, I basically looked at the studios that my icons got their stuff recorded at so Strong Rooms is where the Prodigy did uh, music for the Jilted Generation which would be um, Break and Enter Their Law Voodoo People Poison No Good One Love Three Kilos Great album. And then they did Fat of the Land, which was Smut My Bitch Up, Breathe, Diesel Power, Funky Shit, Serial Thriller, Minefields, Narian, Firestarter, Climatized, Fuel My Fire. That's a track selection in order. Mm. So that's bad that you know that off by heart. That's a great album. Also, shout out the sample for Smut My Bitch Up. What one? Put that in the link. Balls and Prey by Rage yeah. Against the Machine. Both. Ultramagnetic, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Ultramagnetic yeah, yeah. MCs. Change my pitch up, smack my bitch up like a pimp. Churn. Yeah, that's Great mad churn. that I only realised that when you showed me recently. Yeah, like it, so you wouldn't like realise. Two weeks ago you showed me that and yeah. I was like, oh my God. It's that's such a simple little bit of hip hop lyrics. And you the video for Smack My Bitch Up is insane. It is, well. it's one of the best. It is easily, we're like going to do a music video thing. The at the end. It's a girl and she's oh, just a nutter. And that, 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 that just, it's just insane that that. They took that on board at the beginning. Any, of it. any, any, any feminist listening, we're on your side. There you, you go. Should, you should be able to go and get fucking drunk. Yeah, fucking do it. And fucking get do be it. sick in the toilet and be like, it was a woman. You deserve that. Strong, independent woman. You go get pissed, babe. Yeah, you do, do it. it. Do Fair it. Play, you respect. Want. And I mean, I'm not even saying that in a sarcastic way. I mean that. Like, you go out and party. Some of the other raves I've been to, some of the hardcore, most hardcore people have been birds, and they've been like, you're, yeah, do it. Why not? Already did. Yeah. Way ahead. But yeah, so um, basically, Strong Rooms is where Prodigy did Jilted Generation of Fat of the Land, and then the Chemical Brothers did their latest album, which was uh, No Geography. And uh, the guy who did my track, he's worked with LCD Sound System, Chemical Brothers, MK, which we'll play a bit of in a minute. Um, yeah, we got, bass, a whole, we got a whole track list uh, ready all, for all those people who have mixed well. down. At, um, but we, he also rooms. worked with Basement Jacks as well, which is a bit... Basement basically, Jacks. people who were there, at the, you know... And the, the room I did the my track in was where Spice Girls... I don't know what tracks as such they did in there, but it was still... Whether it's your music or not, I don't get it. We who you know are. that Mel B was there. <laughs> <laughs> Cutsy pins at your bastards! Any Bo oh. Selector lovers out there, I'm on it. But yeah, so basically, it was... Um, I don't care if you if you go Spice Girls are they not dance who cares they're still no, the Spice Girls Spice it's Girls respect to have Spice been Girls. insanely they're icons of pop icons, and pop yeah. is still going you know now CDs are still popping the, the, so they did the a big point deal. that even though maybe me and Tom don't rave about pop here pop has had an, had an influence on everything well, it, all, all music has led the to the fact this. that it's pop means that it has an insane influence on every genre. Exactly. It's targeted Otherwise, at 13 year old girls pop. and mums who drive them to school. Yeah. But that's a lot of that's a yeah. big population of our country. And yeah. if if we get rave, drum and bass, anything into the pop category, that's a plus. So the fact that It is a plus but then it, it also kills that genre. No 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 it hasn't. Because Wilkinson mm. Wilkinson is pop drum and bass. How good is Wilkinson? Afterglow. Exactly. So True. you cannot say that. True. You have to allow for every genre. See, we, that, are, we are an open space here. Any yeah. genre counts. If it's a good tune, it's exactly. a good tune. It's a good tune, good tune. You know, no matter what I, it is. I, I, like, I like Gabba, I like Jungle, I like Country. Johnny Cash, behave. <laughs> Johnny Cash, love him. Um, Settle down, Johnny. Exactly, yeah. And then you've got Aphex Twin, and then you've got, I like the Cranberries, and you've oh, got. Oh, we will link a video that Tom showed me the other day. Day might have been was it yesterday or today? The one on Pornhub. No, Not that you one. showed me the something other one on Pornhub. very recently. Was it today? It's been that long ago. You showed me a Johnny Cash. Oh, the mix. other one on Pornhub with the Johnny Cash thing. No, no, no. Oh, Aphex cool. Twin mix. Oh, Aphex Twin Johnny Cash. And Pornhub. Was that today? You showed me that. Aphex Twin. Yeah, no, that was the other day with the with the. Was yeah, it? yeah. So no, basically, two days ago. Okay. It's Aphex Twin. I've basically, he's doing like a up. he's doing like a live you know live show for I think it's like ninety three, and he's got a full on Windows ninety eight. <sighs> You know that like those computers you got. You you know you know those computers you get, and it's like it's got its own color. That like greeny, beigey, pale computer yeah, color. Beige was the color for all. Computers. Well, it wasn't beige, but it was the closest color Gray I could think beige. of. It was like Gray. a grey, yellow, greeny beige. And I basically, whenever I picture that color, I just hear dial up. Yeah. And Ren and Stimpy. They're the, yeah, I just picture Ren and Stimpy. 
and uh, and dial up. And I was like, "What's that noise?" And my mum was like, "I just dial-up. had uh, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time." Was all I remember that. Is that it's a game that I used to play? Lost in Time. That rings Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. This is going to sound a lot really weird, but in the last podcast I mentioned about with the Sienna Miller thing, if you get it, you get it. Hmm. Lola Bunny. There's a lot of guys thinking, show Lola Bunny, and there's some people going, it's a cartoon, that's weird. He's not, Sam's nodding and he's confirmed Lola Bunny. I was thinking, his eyes have, have, have spread and he's nodding, and I'm thinking he's either like, Tom, you're a freak, but he actually meant... Nah. D T F B down to fuck third bunny. Third and voice crack of the podcast. Dude, oh, fuck me with the thing with the oh, that's awful, Sam. I'm gonna smash your decks on your face. Sorry about that. That was the third voice crack of the podcast. It's, not it's funny it's, how that um, we hadn't had a single one for the first four, and, and then the last three we've had, just we've had a voice crack goes, for every Ooh. single one. It's funny that, but anyway. Um, I'm uh, all the furries out there. What do you Lola mean by that? Bunny. Tom, you know, I'll show you afterwards. Furries refers to a certain demographic of uh, people. 70 vagina? No, cool. I'll, um, that's Rowl, completely though. wrong. That's cool. completely wrong. Um, a lot of, again, a lot, will, a lot of people will be I will like. I'll show you after this, but Lola Bunny, those who know will know. What? That's all we'll say. Lola, Lola Bunny. Lola Bunny. She knows who will know. No, no, know. those who know. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly, my mate Max. I'm so ashamed, your name is shame you, brother. Shout out, Max. But at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, you... Love you, to meet you, bro. You, we love you on. Love he's, to meet he's you, an, bro. He's a fucking nightmare, but uh, he's great. But he, he agrees, he's like Lola Bunny. Like It's, it's like from the... Um, I want to I text what's, my brother what's now. What's the film from, not Looney Tunes Back in Action, the one before, that was like live action cartoon with real people before... The Space Jam. No, no, the after that. It was uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, mate, that used yeah, to bust yeah, yeah. me out. But you know the bit with the Jessica was that, Rabbit? Um, was the, that, um, the creepy one. She... Was that guy from Always Sunny? Danny DeVito was in that. No, Bob he? Hoskins. Little, little, you don't know about this. Bob Hoskins, apparently, yeah. he's my third cousin. But, yep. what? Yep. Let me get my phone. You're going to family tree it? I have never done this, actually, because my nan could be talking utter bullshit. I feel like your nan's she says, talking utter shit. I mean, she, she's deaf and dumb, so she couldn't say anything. But um, Bob Hoskins was your you... uncle. Third cousin, well off. Such a big difference between a uncle Bob, and a how do you spell it? Hoskins. <laughs> <laughs> Just spelling it like kids That's going. That's your third cousin. Tabel. Table. He's an English actor, so I. I yeah, believe he's from it like around than... London, Islington, I think area kind of thing. Like, and that's where my nan was from. And like, okay, I, I believe it. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, he died. But if I met him when he was alive, I'd say, "Give me some money, please." Yeah, he died like sort of like I don't know, five, ten years ago. Oh, yeah, man. man. The first thing I said was, "Give me some pocket money," because I'm fucking skint and you, you ain't. So, do you know what I mean? Do you know? Um, I'm just saying real quick. We've had one song. Yeah. No, nah, two. Oh fuck! It's been one. Right. Cool. Back onto strong rooms. So. Had a good day with Strong Rooms, really good day. Got my track list down. Um, the um, the next track I'm going to play is The Prodigy, The Day's My Enemy. There's going to be two Prodigy tracks, and it might seem like I'm, you know, kissing some ass a little bit, but I'm not. There's context behind it. The reason I'm going to play this is because my uh, the guy who I messaged uh, emailing at Strong Rooms about getting a day there, he, he wanted some reference tracks of like the track, the sort of overall sound they're going for and ref, basically just referencing and one of them was um, Rory God's Whisper which will pop in the Spotify playlist which is very tribal, clapping, chanting which is... Your, you do love yeah. your tribal I mixes. do love my tribal, you know. Drumming at the anyone, young age, anyone I love Anyone who's purgatory day one fans will know that Tom you're going, loves tribal drums. I love it. There's nothing better than Ridiculous. a fat chance beat with some mad bongos yeah, yeah, and you're like, fucking, like vocal but, um, like... Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, get yeah. chance. I love some chance, but yeah, basically with, with with this with the chance, uh, that was the Rory Goss whispered that my but my overall master sound would have been the, the Prodigy Days, my enemy, very like aggressive, raw energy, um, very like dark and kind of hard hitting, and uh, the drums. I explained these when when I first heard this track on Radio One, um, I was driving from Chelmsford to Raynham, and I was like. I'm gonna time it so Zane Lowe was playing the prodigy. He was dropping oh, days, mate. Zane Lowe. Yeah, try here. Yeah. Days and um, good days. Yeah, memory. I was in my, I was in my black Renault Clio just to like get my chav on driving back, and I was like, I'm gonna, I've got to move some stuff, and I was like, I'm gonna wait till seven forty. Uh, 7.55 Zane Lowe yeah, in wait, the afternoon give it, give it that 5 
give it that five minute gap and then he, he played the days mind of me it was the first drop of it and he rewound it three times and he was oh, like what? I've got to play it and it was just those drums and I was just he just kept rewinding it and it was just so it was so high energy basically so in my whole I gave, life I've never heard a Radio 1 DJ rewind a tune exactly exactly That's and it's insane. like the prodigy there's no there's no and any any again you know you know Sienna Miller Lola Bunny the prodigy I don't know how probably you're going to that's feel about being put in that category, but yeah. That's the podcast name right there. Sienna Miller, Lola Bunny, <laughs> the Prodigy. Yeah, that's, that's a strong lineup. I mean, people are going to go, we're going to get some hard, you know, some, some sexy girl, some sexy rabbit girl, and the Prodigy. And, um, yeah, so basically, um, my master sound I was going for was Days My Enemy, and the track that I did at Strong Rooms was in Strong Room 2, but Liam Howler requested that he, my sound engineer, David, told me that Liam Howlett requested to hear The Day Is My Enemy on the speakers in Strong Rooms 3. So as that was my reference track, David said we can finish it, mix it down and go test it on the speakers that your reference track was originally sourced from. And that was genuinely the best news and such a strong story to tell. So check this and see the difference between mine and this. Enjoy. J. The day is my anime. <laughs> the day is my anime. I'm not. I'm not like stuck on loop. Like the day is my anime. Day is my anime. 
that, the that track is called The Day Is My Day Enemy is my and the album is called The Day Is My Enemy and it was released in 2015 and it's a fucking big Fuck album. Fuck off was so, that 2015? Yeah. yeah. Do you know I remember being in uh, being school yeah, sure. in sixth form and we used to have a free period, we'd go out to my mate's house, shout out Liam, he's probably listening, we used to go back to his house because he lived literally 20 seconds from the school gate. That's a very so we close used to literally journey. every Was break... his parent a caretaker of the house or no, of the school? No. He just moved there. So every break, every free period, we'd literally go back to his house and play PS4. Can I tell you a little story about when I... And when anyway, I, when I... we used to play uh, Guitar Hero PS4, can't remember what year, and there was a song from Dare's Men and Me, can't remember which what song. One? Would it be Rockweiler? Oh, let me find it. Let me Please find do. It. Would it be Invisible Sun? Yeah, I'm thinking no, of the one with, with guitar in it. Ibiza, uh, no. Destroy, Wild Frontier, Nasty... Nasty, 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 nasty. Yeah, well, I was on, yeah, that man. was on Guitar Hero, and we used to play that, and that nice. just reminds me of that. It was can, can I tell you a story? When I lived in New Zealand, I was like the. Um, was that in 2015? You lived in New Zealand? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. This was when I was in. I was in. I was like 13, so I would have been, yeah, 2004 to 2006 ish. And. Um, Six. Yeah. Dude. You were young. I wasn't even. In <laughs> secondary school in two exactly yeah man big big difference but yeah basically uh, so I had some we had a bar it, not I'm not bragging here this isn't a brag this is just the the way of life in New Zealand so we at our house we had a bar we had my my room had two balconies what? one either exactly two either side my old my room was an old why living am room. I in London exactly you know why? what I mean like wasting away just burning earning, earning shit like uh, shit nothing and then and then in New Zealand they got like two balconies for a fourteen year old what do I need that for. Um, I literally, I think I stepped on the second one like once because I didn't need it. But anyway, um, so basically, I just, uh, I don't know if any of you guys know what a chow chow is, but I said a chow chow. She looked like Winnie the Pooh, like a really like fluffy ginger. You get like black chows, white chows, and red chows. She was a red, red's more blonde, but she had like purple tongue and she was just this big fat mess. And I had my friends over from school. So I was a new kid and I was English and that, and I was like, oh, let's be cool. Why on lunch we go back to my bar and they were like, Oh my god, you got a bar. Went there, we all did some aftershock shots and went back to school. Aftershock were they? It's like a really my stepdad threw a dart for his brother's hand. That's how drunk they were. Aftershock, just two a uh, bottle each. Um Bottle what? each is a shot. No, like they had a bottle each. So like That's you, you have shots, but they had a whole bottle and they were this is the most drunk I've ever seen. Of what though? Aftershock. I don't even know. I don't know shock is a spirit. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. I've, I haven't actually seen it over here. It might be a New Zealand thing. I, obviously, I wasn't old enough to be like okay, so fourteen year old. Like, I'll get a fucking bottle, bottle of aftershock bell. Um, it was just strong. Yeah, red and blue and uh, real, real strong shit. But basically, um, I invited my friends over to be popular, and my dog Sasha got out, and I found this like her injured duck, like duckling, on my drive. And all my mates around my house, and they had to go back to school, and my dog got out, and I was like, right, it was a disaster. It was like Ferris Bueller's day off, but the opposite of the result of the film. He had a yeah. good day. I had a fucking shit day. And um, my dog got out, and this duckling was hurt, and I put this duckling in a little shoebox, tried to feed it, and like, just like, I don't know what to do. I'm not like Dr. Doolittle. I just tried to help it. I just didn't want it to die. Put some bread in a little box and some water. I tried to help it and it died. And I was like, I buried it. And I was like, I was fucking distraught. That's and my sad. dog was out. And I was like, all my friends are back at school. They don't have, like, these are like in fourth period now. And my dog got out. And I was like, oh, right, I've got to tell my parents. The duck died. Sasha's got out. And I skipped school. <laughs> I'm in shit. Triple and, um, whammy there. Literally, yeah. And uh, I, the only the last was what I had was the way you got Sasha to get attention was say, look what I got because she was a fat fucker and she it was just like he's obviously got food. And I was like, oh. last shot, Sasha, look what I got. And she just jumped out of a bush and I was like, you bastard. And she was like, you ain't got anything. She legged it. I grabbed her, went back to school. I had sticks in my hair, mud on my face. Dog and, in your hand. No, no, I took her home. Okay. But Doc died. Sasha's inside. I've got sticks on my hair and mud on my face. And this, this is my second day. And the teacher, and the teacher was like, "Who are you?" I was like, "I'm the English guy." What time to call this? <laughs> uh, I don't know. And everyone was like, "Oh, the English guys are right. He's well hard." And I was just like, "What a fucking idiot!" It was a nightmare. I don't know how we got to that from. There you Apologies go. Days, my enemy, that was. Uh, oh, I was just saying how um, my school years was just three periods going to black play. Guitar Hero, 
PS4. Guitar Hero is cool. Do you know what? Actually, my brother used to work in a Cine, uh, cine World. I'm not going to say what town. It's Braintree. I did say it, but I don't want to get me in trouble. But he doesn't work there anymore, so it doesn't matter. We played Xbox on the cinema screen and we played Guitar Hero. Oh, I remember wicked. playing Mountain Mississippi Queen, walking down, you know, the aisle of the, of the cinema. <laughs> I was just like, I just, I, we played Burnout, FIFA. Halo, Call of Duty, and Guitar Hero. Dude, I was just playing Mississippi Burnout. Queen. I oh. felt like the dopest twat. Alice and Chains. Oh. Burnout soundtrack. Oh, Wicked. We'll pop that in the Spotify playlist. But yeah, basically, so... Yeah, back to diverting. This was the, uh, prodigy, the prodigy Today is Mine to Me. And uh, I basically got to... That, that was my reference track, and I got to test out my track that my reference was that was the reference for it. I got to test it out on these speakers because I'll put a little clip on the Instagram page. These speakers are basically, they're built into the wall and they're, David was saying how he doesn't really, they're almost too big. They're too, they're too um, top end, too tinny. They, they're just and too they, big. They just suit, everything's they amplified and it doesn't genres. give you a balance. It's yeah. just it's just aggression, which I totally understand why Liam Howler would have listened to them on those speakers because it's that's what they're pretty about. They're about aggression. I get why you wouldn't like them, but I get why you would. But I'll put a little minute clip on the Instagram page. But that was like... I, I don't think there's many people out there who have done the, the technique of what I've done, of like you put in your knowledge and your passion and your dedication, but the one thing you haven't done is funding. And then you go to the source of where the sound that you're kind of going for, like aggressive, distortion, really gritty, and then you get to go test them out on your the source of your reference track. That's... That's special, yeah. and I didn't even intend that. It just it just so happened, and yeah, that's that's a pretty incredible thing. So so, safe strong rooms, safe master H, and safe. Uh, Bertie, dirty Bertie, you lived at number thirty. Next track we're gonna bring in. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really got much to like too much to talk about this. But basically, David Jones, I just want to do a little like push for him because he's he's such a nice guy, great guy, so clever. And he's worked with a lot of artists. He's worked with, uh, as we said before, Basement Jacks, Chemical Brothers, LCD Sound System, and MK. Yeah, so this next one basically is um, it's he didn't necessarily like work on this track, but he worked with the artist. This is MK. Uh, I got shown this remix years ago, and I'm not really a househead as I mentioned before, but this is one of those tracks that you're like, it doesn't matter what genre you like, you hear it, and your face just screws up a little bit. So this is. Um, Ha wank wankle mutt is it wankle mutt i don't want to you know it's, wank it's, it's wankle mutt my head is a jungle mk remix but i kind of feel does. a bit it, to me you know what I mean? like it, the word mutt. wank is in there and i don't really want to be like in, in 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 a trial podcast we did there's a guy called guac and i said that sounds too familiar with the word cock and this guy's going for like wankle mutt if you get the word wank cock hand job in your name choose another name Oh 
Is a jungle M- muck remix <laughs> MK remix great remix one of the best muck remix that's, I don't even know why we didn't put that on our remix special because that's we, we we could redo this on another remix one but it's that's an absolute banging remix mm. I, I'm not like again I'm not really a househead but that comes on and I'm like I'm you've got my interest this is groovy but the basically why why I popped this in there is because uh, strong rooms MK apparently came back with some chicks which is pretty cool just sort of like just Doing a track, gonna get Nando's, come back with some birds. Like, pretty rock and roll, really. Not rock and roll as I'd like to be, but it's a good start. You know, I wanna come back with like 50 chicks. Don't even know, you know all, all ages. Sort of like 25 to 80. Just because I'm that much of a rock star, I can get who I want. But uh, he came back with two. Christ. But two's a good start, you know. Match my 80 when I make it, and then we'll talk. But, um,. Absolute great remix, banging remix. But, um, yeah, just banging remix. This house is kind of like bopping, nod along to because mm. it's house. But then you actually listen to a house track, and some of them go, This is the hairs on my back standing up, and I'm feeling grooving. Mm. This is a groovy one. That piano, just a- a- anything old school, old school piano, piano, yeah, just that kind of like 90s entrance yeah. set you free. And you're just going mad on some major chords. You got my attention. And MK, you did it. I remember when we went to Strong Rooms, we looked at the uh, a studio list and MK was on there. No, that was MJ Cole. MJ Cole, oh wow, my mistake. Be sincere. We'll pop that in there as well. My mistake. If you don't know MJ Cole, be sincere. I don't my want bad, you to anyway. everyone. I got them wrong. They both begin with M and J and K are pretty close. Yeah. You know, you've had JFK, people abbreviate joke into JK. No fault of your own, mate. It's sorry. society. Sorry society about, fucked you. Sorry about that, everyone. No, don't, you, don't be sorry, man. It is what it is. Um, yeah, absolute remix. And uh, so basically... The guy who did my track, me, David Jones, he 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 mixed down. Well, I don't know, I don't know what he did, but he said he was involved with not that track, but with MK. And I just, I'm just like, when 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 you go into a big studio for the day and you hear about all the relations to, I, I work in the film industry, and it's pretty shite, but my heart is in music. And then when you go into a place where you hear about, you know, MJ Cole, MK. Basement Jacks, LCD Sound System, The Prodigy, The Chemical Brothers, The Spice Girls, Adele, Radiohead. Radiohead. Exactly. Oh, the These are time. people are oh, jinx. You can't talk to the rest of the podcast. If you do, my daughter jinxed me once. Do you know what I did? I wrote a note on my phone. It was in an adventure island in South End. I said to one of the people doing the rides, can you say my name three times on Jinx? And she did. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> jinx so over. fuck you to your own daughter. Yeah, yeah. Jinx over. And... Um, yeah, so I didn't say that, but I, you know, I was on the right lines, but child friendly, and um, yeah, so stuff basically, you. stuff you, yeah, well, yeah, stuff off, and then you get to thirteen, and you're like, fuck off, <laughs> um, yeah, so absolute tune. There's nothing again. I'm not really a house guy, although I have been this summer in 2020. We didn't really get a summer, did we? So it was just like you get like a tease. It's like a strip tease of. Um, I don't think of like hot celebrity, but I can't. Like Meet the Millers, Jennifer Aniston. Every dad and dude is like, I know exactly what scene you're talking about. Girls also do because they're like, shit. I don't want to hear about you talking about Jennifer Aniston because I know she's sexier than me. 
And you know, you're gonna laugh at that because you know you know you know she's you know it's true, sorry, you know I'm gonna go at you, I'm not with you, I don't give a fuck. But um yeah, so it's like that's that's kinda of like a tease. The sorry, so I was having like through lockdown, the sun's coming out and I was like, I'm gonna pop on Daft Punk's essential mix. Uh amazing honestly amazing, I'll put it in the link in the link. And I kinda of got my, my house jam on. And I've I've learned this track for a few years, but this would totally go with the old school original house and I like that. Mm. Um, the production wise it's quite old school very old school it's yeah. just like you know house beat bit of girly vocal and a fatty piano there is nothing better than a big old piano nothing just all the old school rave you got um, SMD1 it's uh, Slipmat I can't bother to it's, it's you'd know the tune 40 Miles um, Your Love The Prodigy uh, Moby Go a lot of like, old school pianos People try and like emulate them today, and they just don't quite hit it. But if mm. they do, you know about it. And I've got to say, MK, that's one of them. So fair play. I'd to love you. to know the original, like piano they used. The actual name, synth wise. That would be well. That's just piano, just yeah. standard piano. But like, it's just the actual the like, like used. yeah, the sound of it. What was its name? I don't know any pianos. I Comments below. Yamaha, Yamaha, probably something. Do you know what? A little interesting fact as well. I used to work at Metropolis Studios, which is. Pretty big, like, studio, uh, David Guetta, Rhea Ora, Rihanna, Jay-Z. Uh, I got to play Freddie Mercury's piano. I played an A chord wow. and a C chord and the G chords, and that was it. I played G chord twice, but up an octave. This was, like, still G, but uh, because I am a G. And, um, yeah, it's just been, like, he basically, he, he recorded there, but he didn't like the piano. So he was like, let's buy a new one. Left it there because he didn't want it anymore. He just used it for the track. I don't know what the track was, but that was pretty cool. Playing some old school rave chords on the you know on the track that they play fat bottom girls on maybe it's mad. no piano in that but whatever but yeah so um, do you know much about MK because I don't I'm not, gonna not lie. really no yeah I was gonna say I was gonna say it sounds I reckon his Mark his name is like Mark Keaton bang there you go perfect second name yeah um, or Martin Keith two first names <laughs> that's fine some people have two first names what's yeah, your yeah. what's your middle name Alexander. Do you know what my middle name is? Twat. That hurts my feelings, but uh, it's actually, I don't have one. You don't have one? Just my mum doesn't have one. Just Tom Slater. Mm. Maybe me and your mum are meant to be together. Do you know what my initials spell? Uh, Sam Arthur. Your, your first Sam. name? There's a guy, my brother, yeah, my, my, my brother in his year, I can't remember his name, but he was in a TV show when we were kids, and he's Sam Anthony Morris, Sam Morris, his name's Sam. Spurs. Yeah. That's mine. And Same I just fascinated point. me, and now I just found out about you, your, your initials spell your own name. Yeah. That's madness. My mum did that on purpose. My, my, my initials spell a snake noise. <laughs> but instead no, that's a, that's a high hat with just, a good sustain. Yeah, yeah, with a good old face sustain. <laughs> so, uh, next track I'm going to bring in, The Chemical Brothers, No Geography. I don't know if I should say this because J- David Jones asked him, This is quite a, this is a mad album. And The Chemical Brothers have always been strong. And there's no, you know, they're one of the icons of dance music. And he, he, didn't, know, he didn't quite know what one he did. <laughs> he didn't he, know. You know. He did two, but he didn't know what they were called. He thinks he did No Geography. But I'm going to, you know. This track, whether he did this track or not, this is this book was recorded at the studio that I re- recorded that, and it is the Chemical Brothers. You know when you kind of get um, a band like you see like Green Day, Foo Fighters, Chili Peppers, they're still doing the same thing they did back then, mm. and you're kind of like give it a rest. Like Green Day, they're done. Chili Peppers, Dark Necessities was a few years ago, but I I was like the same kind of me- uh, mentality of like give it a rest, and I heard it and was like this is absolutely dope. Same Chemical Brothers, you're gonna think. You're older men now, but then they brought no geography, and you're like, no, you keep you you keep making beats because you are the masters of it, and I think this is a perfect demonstration of that. So this is a Kemp Brothers no geography. If you ever change your mind about leaving it all behind, remember, remember. Thank you. 
your mind about leaving it all behind. Remember, remember, no geography. Me, you, and me. Him and her and them too. And you and me too. I'll take you along. I'll take you along. Chemical Brothers, no geography. Shea, I don't know, I just, I just didn't know what to say. So I just Shea? Said, said the name of the track on the eyes, and I was like, I don't know what else to say. But how, how beautiful is that? Good tune. Chemical Brothers are always strong. There's never been always. a time that they've been like, yeah. No, you're always like, Chemical Brothers are Chemical Brothers, and they are rocking it all the time. And I like that they kind of, uh, they, they, let's face it, they're older men now. But they're not letting their age. I think with dance music, a lot of the pioneers are older now. Mm. But there's that time when you kind of like let it. You either let yourself become an older man, or you go, no, I'm 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 at the root of the of, of being a pioneer. I'm gonna be that's who I am. It doesn't matter how old I am, I am a pioneer. And I kind of feel like the Chemical Brothers and the Prodigy, they are two. No, I feel like people. you're a pioneer until death. Really. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like Chemical Brothers are definitely that. There are. Uh, you think about, uh, you know. Set in Sun, Star Guitar, Block Rock and Beat, Swoon, um, The Test. The Test is one of the best. I'll, I'll put that in the, uh, the in, in the playlist. The Test. You know the Verve. Don't know his mm. name. Can't remember his name. Richard Ashcroft. Yes, that's him. I was thinking of something else, but that is yeah. I'm getting mixed up. He. I've the seen test. him live. Yeah. Richard Ashcroft. Yeah. Decent. Um, he was playing at the same time as Kraftwerk Ooh. at Latitude Festival 2013. And um, I think it was 2013, it might have been a couple of years after, but um, basically he was playing an acoustic set at Latitude whilst Kraftwerk were playing the main stage you could hear electronic. Them. You could hear and the spill. what he was doing was, oh, I don't give a shit about that electronic <laughs> music. I am not a robot. I am not a robot. And we just keep playing acoustic <laughs> tunes. And it was like, it was good. And everyone was like, yeah, acoustic tunes. But at the same time, Kraftwerk were playing. And that was insane. You were sort of drifting over there, like, I want to go it's like, pop mm, to this. You know, I yeah. am a robot at the end of the day. I don't give a shit. No, you know. Is he an actual robot? Well, no, he was like just alien. saying he doesn't want to play electronic music because it's like robots. When he bleeds, it's like that white, weird shit. You know, an alien. Like from Aliens, yeah. Yeah, and it's like uh, some foamy, go- like foamy milk. guy. Yeah, yeah, and he's actually, he yeah. is an alien robot dude. And, and no wonder he's a good singer because he's been programmed to sing like a fucking yeah. dude. So maybe that's the case. But yeah, the Chemical Brothers are test. If you haven't heard it, I'll pop it in this playlist. One of the best Chemical Brothers tracks. Chemical Brothers are just, they're one of those groups that's kind of like... The, the reason I love Chemical Brothers, The Prodigy, Bonobo, Aphex Twin, they're, some people would argue this, but you get your DJs who are your uh, your drum and bass, you've got your Wilkinson, your Sub Focus, your High Contrast, mm. you've got your Dubstep, you've got your uh, Flux Pavilion, your Funk Case, your Nero, you've got your House, MK, I don't know who else was on the house. Exactly. But, um... There's a difference between a DJ who sort of makes like it, so. For example, if you hear a track by Flux Pavilion come out, nine times out of ten you go right. It's going to be around one forty. It's it's going to be dubstep, and you know it's going to be. But if you if you see a track from the Prodigy or Bonobo, you see the track name, and you're like, I have no idea what this is going to be. And Could that's be exciting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like they're that, that that's the difference. They between don't, the they're dance. not locked to a genre. Yeah. yeah, they. It's like their name is more intriguing. And you, 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 you could be surprised or you could be let down, but nine times out of ten you're going to be surprised and go, mm. they've always got it. And that's uh, just I the way I think it's been week. a bit latest album. Might be wrong because I haven't listened to him in a while, but one of his latest albums, the music videos that went with it are insane. Is that the one with uh, when it, it adds a frame? Yeah, so yeah, every, every beat, it, yeah. it repeats the few frames and then every... Adds one each adds frame. One. And there's another one where it's down, uh, a camera down a rail down through a set 
and it would just zoom out of this set that was obviously a miniature set and it would have a different thing yeah, every time. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Insane, but yeah, like that, in, yeah. in terms of filmmaking, that's mad. It's just for the music video. Yeah. yeah, no, I like that. That's exactly, that's exactly it. I love um, Kimka Brothers Star Guitar. We spoke about it in the last uh, one of the last ones. That's one of my first vinyls. The video for Star Guitar is just literally just a camera on a train, mm. just going along. So you just get to see like a time lapse of just travelling. And it's so easy and so, in in theory, shit. Mm. Let's just hold a camera on a train, but it's not. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And Chemical Brothers, they've done. Um, Chemical Brothers is one of the best things happened to dance music. Yeah, I've never seen them. As I mentioned before, as well with the uh, the Kaiser Chiefs, I waste my time on some fat geezer pub bands. Kaiser yeah, what a fucking what a fucking Brothers. melt. Didn't realise. Kaiser Chiefs at best like a pub band who were like we let's go to Smith and play fucking Brown Eyed Girl Ryan. yeah exactly and then Chemical Brothers were playing didn't even see him and uh, every time I've gone to see them since they've just sold out in seconds and it's like I want to and I feel like I'm going to get the chance to and I'm getting a bit itchy like you guys you're not going to be going for much longer mm. but in saying that though you've got like Orbital Underworld they, Mike, Mike, do you know Underworld? Do you know yeah. Born Slippy by uh, Underworld? It's for a train spotting. My cousin's best friend's dad is. Dog's his, pet fish's brother. No, not that far. Just to, my, my, my cousin's friend's dad is the lead singer for Underworld. What? Yeah. And I said to him, get me, me, me hook us up, and he's like, yeah, I will. I'm like, Ethan, if you don't, Ethan, Taylor, this is a message to you. If you don't hook me up with Wonder, uh, Wonderworld, Underworld, I'm gonna. Well. Sort of ask you again, really. I'm not gonna do anything about it. I'm just gonna say, can, can you? Can you just please? keep asking? Please, may you? So yeah, um, we're gonna. I'm gonna play one more now. This is another prodigy. The reason why I play this is because this is this is the end of the show. We're gonna wrap it up real nicely here. So we played my track, which is cool affected by Purgatory. It's not. It's not. It's an official release, but it's just my track that's made. Blah blah blah. Pushing out to labels. Anyone likes the vibe, message me. Happily send it over. I've got a lot to talk about, and I've got a lot more demos to show. And um, second track was the Prodigy. Dead is my enemy reference track. We've had MK Chemical Brothers. This one here, I'm gonna leave you for a little pumper. This is a track here that a big influence on my upbringing. A lot of people, if you didn't know, people think of the Prodigy as Firestarter and Breathe, kind of like Rocky Dance, but then they actually forget that one of the biggest ever trance tracks in the world is made by the Prodigy, but you wouldn't notice them. So check this one out, this is the Prodigy, no good, start the dance.
Prodigy. No good. Start that dizzle. <laughs> Start it, boy. Like, I know I said, like, sort of introduce this track in a different way, but I kind of want to just be like, can you honestly tell me, don't lie to me, if you're sitting there and you're living listening to this, don't tell me you're not skanking, because I am. I sound very At still, but I'm not. At least you're screwing up your face to yeah, this. Yeah, you're just sitting there going, exactly, I don't even, yeah. some people don't even know this is a prodigy, and you're sitting there just like, mm, 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 mm. Wow, that was so in time then. Just clicking too. People don't use clicks enough, that's why I love the prodigy. <laughs> they don't go for claps, they're like, Absolute tune, and um, it's just absolutely banging. I mean, it's 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 when you think of the prodigy, you think of Fire Start, you think of Breeze, Smack My Bitch Up, but then the prodigy were there for the pioneer of literally dance music. You know, their first album was uh, Experience, and the big ones from that would be Charlie, um, Out of Space. My personal favorite on that is Rough in the Jungle Business, Killer. Oh, so, so big. And uh, what else we got? Weather Experience your love but you listen to them and you just think they're one of those dance tracks that were just big because you know like Saturday night Saturday night whatever and you had um, pretty baby exactly and then you had um, I love you baby you got like your love uh, you'd know it if you heard it but you wouldn't realize it's a prodigy and you kind of like out of context you'd be like this isn't them mm. but it is and they've just done so much variety in such a foundation of dance music. Whether you realise it or not, they're just one of the, they're just one of the pioneers of... You, you think of dance music as a whole, the amount of people that go out raving on the weekend, people people live to go out and see hear, hear some fat bass and some strobe mm -hmm. lights. Prodigy, Moby, Aphex Twin, Slipmat, Chemical Brothers, Basement Jacks, they were there in the early days and... They set the groundworks for it. They the did, yeah. Nation. There's a lot yeah. of like uh, production techniques that you hear from uh, now in Trap, for example. That's from Prodigy Experience. And if if I showed you the comparison, you go wow, but you wouldn't notice it otherwise. Mm. And um, Daft Punk, you know, they they same sort of thing. They've been there since the beginning. So many things that are done these days are actually you, you think it's like a new big thing. No, that was done at the beginning, and they're so ahead of their time. And I just want to give people that credit. When you think of the prodigy, you think of Keith Flint in a tunnel screaming Firestarter. No, he, he didn't make the beats. Liam Howell made the beats, and they all, their paths crossed lines at the most precise timing to make one of the biggest movements of dance, of mu not just dance, just the music in general. Mm. And, f like, congratulations for being, you were, you were chosen. Fair play to you. And mm. everyone thanks you for it. So no dance is why I chose that because it's just one of the biggest iconic dance tracks in the world, and you don't you might not even know it's a prodigy. So fair play, what tune? Mm. There's actually a gig I'll put it in the link. It's uh, the Prodigy at Phoenix Festival in uh, 1994. Don't know what I said. I sort of like mumbled too. Uh, <laughs> 1994. Uh, I think it's 94. 90. No, it wasn't. It was when, it was, I think it was like 96 or 97 when like Five Star and um, uh, Diesel Power and mm. Smart Bitch was out. But they do no good start the dance. And he's like, Maxine Reality, he's like, let everyone up on the stage. And there's just loads of people raving with the prodigy on stage while I was playing no good. And it's just like, those days are over. You can't have someone, you can't have a random stranger on stage because I might stab you. But, um. No, uh, security would come take you off. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But then the prodigy was saying, like, security, let them on. We want to jam with them. And you've just got some people just, like, fulfilling their wildest dreams, raving with the prodigy on stage, having the best time of their life. Mm. And it's like, that's when gigs were, they were, that was a show, but you could get involved with that. I think it felt like the prodigy was sort of, they did shows, but they weren't artists, they were ravers. Mm. And they were with them. Everyone was with it, you know. Just because they were on stage didn't mean that they were any separate or any better than the people raving on the ground. Mm. They were in it together. And that's the difference. You can see difference of DJs today are being, like, waving their arms in the air. Like, one of those weird, like, wacky inflatable tube men in a fucking car selling thing. And then you've got, like... Do you know what I mean? When DJs go like, they're waving their arms, EDM. 
and the smoke goes and they're just waving their arms. So if you was a DJ, you wouldn't have time to wave your arms. Lots of the performance mixing. aspects yeah, yeah. and the community aspects. No, no, no. Yeah. They've, they've gone too much to the performance. And it's not about the music, it's about the, like, the well, smoke yeah, like the, lost and the, the community. Yeah, and it's not yeah. about the music, it's about the like, down there, people aren't listening to music, they're talking about, oh, is he going to shag me later? Like, am I doing, like, am I looking fit? Like, have I got enough tan? Well, years ago it was about I'm going to wear, I'm gonna wear my trackies. Lose yourself in the music. Exactly, The moment yeah. you want it, you better never let it go, yo. <sighs> you only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You yeah. better. Yeah, exactly. Like a bit of 8 Mile. Exactly. Maybe Eminem was an Oscar raver and no one knew about it. Definitely. I reckon he was. I want to get in touch because I say... Dear... Yo, huh? Yo, M. I was going to say, uh, uh, dear Mr. Shady. Dear Marsh. Yeah. Or... Dear Mr. Mathers. Munem. M. M yeah, this, dear Mr. Munem. M. Munem. What's going on? What changed? Did you get older and you couldn't You're bother You're just going to become like the music video of Stan. What, just he's going to kill himself a in a fan writing in and then shit happens. <laughs> what, he's going to do it to himself? What? That's full circle. Yeah. You write a song about yourself and you get a music video and then you end up dying like that. Sort of you, you sort of planted that seed yourself, and you sort of killed yourself in your own boot with Dido, but um, not Dido. Madonna this time. Dildo, just slightly changed the name, very subtly. I wonder if that's how she got her name. What? Go on. <laughs> Tell me what that's you think about That's why she called herself Dido. She was fudding herself silly with a dildo one night, and she was like, "Dildo, Dido, potato, potato." It's one less difference. <laughs> Again, another lawsuit. Let's leave it at that because I don't want to get sued anymore. Seven shows, I'm already being sued seven times. <laughs> maybe maybe more. I don't even know. I don't give a shit. But um, I, do, I do give a shit. I do because, you know. But um, don't sue me. Get me on your side. I'll join the dark side and we'll all do sue shitting together. But um, thank you for tuning in for that. Yeah. That one was a bit of a whim. It was a bit of a... That was a nice one. It was just it was a bit a of an one. insight of a completely day. Completely improvised. Completely improvised, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they usually are... We have an idea of what we're doing, but this one here was like, do you want to do a strong room special? And I did. But the idea of the strong rooms, it was a great day. Sam came along, and it was just like being at the source of my original love. And, uh, you know, if anything comes to this, you fanboys and girls are going to be like, I followed him through the whole lot. But then if this goes nowhere, my strong room thing doesn't matter. Doesn't matter anyway, does it? So, whatever. So, do you know so, what I mean? Yeah, you were here for the start, the original. You heard the tracks here first. You did, and you can invest in that. And um, is it Trading Two One Two on YouTube that everyone gets really pissed off at? Eh? You know, Trading Two One Two. You can invest in my company, and then you can be a slice of that. But like if you invest in it, I'm not going to give you shit. You're just a mug for fucking doing it. Who buys into YouTube adverts? I don't. So if you do, cheers. But whatever. I mean, we haven't got any YouTube adverts no. anyway. Christ, no. I don't know. Ever. I, the other day, do you remember? Do you remember when? So adverts were a thing. You watch our friends or Frasier on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah, like a f like three to four minute advert. You'd be like, oh. and it's like we've gone to YouTube and it's now like we get every like, thirty seconds. It is every thirty seconds, and there's now two of them, and you're oh. like. This is worse than it was before. We're supposed to be moving forward. The world's Not going gone backwards insane. And going, yeah. You're going to have like a five minute episode of Friends on a Friday night and the 25 minutes of adverts and shit that I've already got or I'm never going to get. You know what I mean? I've yeah. got Hoover. So tune in to Save the Podcast because, in, because we don't anyway. have any ads. So there's a plus. Yeah. We might have a lawsuit, so tune in for that. That'd be fun. Anyway, but, um, thank you for tuning in for Save the yeah. Podcast. By the way, my, I, will, I will pop the link to my. Um, Demo, oh, my, my, my track I got mixed down there all this and no one knows it's like well, what is the track so it's I'll unreleased put that man. It's all so it is unreleased yeah. but if you want to hear it DM me get, get a link for your set what does DM stand for direct message cool I was going to say such an old man no, I was going to say dog minds but they're shoes so oh um, my yeah. god you're so, so old. hey guys if you like my track directly message me and I might reply or I might not but I probably will Safe. There you go. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I've never said that in my life. Yeah. So thank you. So thank you for listening to that. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Mixcloud, YouTube, all that crap. 
Thank you. Well, you know you won't because you're only interested in your own shit if you're on Instagram, so whatever. But if, yeah, you, if you do, great. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You don't give a shit. We don't give a shit. We're, I just want to do this and have fun. We're talking about... Yeah, Julia's going to be really mad at us because she's our social media yeah. executive. Yeah, well, that's all, yeah, yeah, she's so good she fucking went to bed. So, um, there you go. But yeah, anyway, cheers for tuning in. Guys. Peace See out. See you next time. Peace.